All right, let's uh, let's watch this trailer for The Lies of P. A fool craves acceptance, and I am no fool. Let the masses chatter their empty praises. They're ignorant of the truth, blind to my vision. This game's gonna be pretty as hell. You can tell that much. <laughs> this game's gonna be pretty as hell, dude. It looks it great even for being a shitty 1080p video. This blessing for those who dare seize it. This key to a new paradigm, a new world. This moment to silence the fools forever. This is Ew. Ergo. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jeez Louise. Soon they'll praise me. If they dare speak. Speak at all. The hell is that, dude? Game is called Lies of P. I'm, I'm looking forward to Witchfire. Hi, my name is Adrian Chmielasz, and I am the creative director at The Astronauts. In this video, I want to show you how guns work in Witchfire. Show it to me. When you get a new gun, it's just a dead piece of metal. Let's take this hand cannon called Hunger as an example. Oh, I love a hand cannon, dude. It works as expected, can get the job done, but there is nothing special about it. Well, that's because its true power is hidden from mere mortals. All guns have powerful magic inside them, but only the witch hunters can access it. This sounds like some pro-gun propaganda. Some pro-weapon propaganda. Let's see that in action. Hunger feeds on critical hits. Reloading it will give you as many extra powerful bullets as critical hits before... Says the nitro rifle. <laughs> ...the reload. So, for example, here I score three critical hits, then I reload, and now the first three bullets from the new clip have extra power. But that's just the first level of the hunter's attunement with the gun. The second level makes the gun even more powerful because that extra strength of bullets is no longer a flat increase. Oh. Now it also depends on the number of critical hits before the reload. Here's me scoring a critical hit, reloading and firing that new extra strength bullet at another enemy. Nope, that was not enough to kill him. But now let's see what happens if I score, say, three critical hits, reload, then shoot the same enemy. There we go, this time just one bullet was enough. As you can see, cool. this particular weapon is one like kind of complicated, but kind of neat to deal with like meta weaponry type shit. That's kind of neat. One for an eagle eye hunter because it can only sing if you hit your crits. But when you do hit them, you become a powerful evil killing machine. And that's how the gun magic works in Witchfire. Thank you for watching. And by the way, yes, there's also the final third level. This is what I was wondering. Thank you for answering. Hunger, it can do things like this. <laughs> I like how he just gave us a what, by the way, one more thing in a two minute video. <laughs> we straight up got one more thinged in a two minute video. That's cool. Here, let's watch, let's watch this, uh, let's watch this Redfall video. Something wicked dark is coming. They took over the hospital almost immediately. Like they planned it. You sent people to Avon. Folks out there are I'm really stoked for this. This feels like it's going to be a lot of fun because it's going to be super fucking scary, I feel. Especially when you're playing multiplayer. I think it's going to be the perfect kind of funny stream game. I'm going to get scared shitless and it's a first person shooter. Like that sounds awesome. My child, the sun. Is it And I'm way more willing to get scared shitless when I'm with friends in the same game with me as opposed to like me just single player when I'm playing Resident Evil 8 
and Blessing and Mike are just watching me, like, that's the worst. I love getting scared when me and other friends are getting scared in the game, you know? Covered up here, or is it dark everywhere else, too? You know what happened at the shelter. You think that can't happen here? Oh, see, I don't like that. I don't like this guy. This this gentleman needs to just fucking relax for a second on the far right. This dude. I don't I don't like the floating chat. You think that can't happen here? Oh, kukui. Are you gonna play Resident Evil 4 Remake though? I'm gonna like try it. Mostly just because I want to see how the visuals look, because I know it's gonna be pretty as shit. Yeah, this is Redfall. Oh shit, come on. What the fuck? What is this place? It's like the weirdest dream. This is gonna be awesome. Oh, Jesus! That man was muscular. Coast Guard station got taken over pretty quick. Everyone scattered. We gotta get out there, grab some supplies, and help. This is gonna be so this sick. Mess. This is. I think this is the best the game has looked in terms of like giving me kind of the TLDR. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, sick. I'm in, bro. This is the one that did it for me, dude. This is the one that did it for me. Yeah, and plus, like, yeah, when if a trailer can pick good music. That was cool. That looked awesome. I liked that. Oh, shit, Chad. It's game of the year, though, right here. Game of the Many year. Many people have attempted to write about the things that have taken place among us. Reports of these things were handed down to us. There were people who saw these things for themselves from the beginning. They saw them and then passed the word on. With Walk this on mind, water. <laughs> I myself. No way. No way. No way. One of the fucking abilities is walk on water. I myself have carefully looked into everything from the beginning. I'm Simon. This is my brother, Andrew. We're trying to catch fish. I, I'm afraid to... Just, just make the whole river, the whole ocean wine. <laughs> it appears to have a small issue. I don't know, but I thought you might be able to help. Water to wine! Oh my god! This wine is better than the wine we had before! <laughs> no! Please, Lord, just heal my son. <laughs> oh no! Lord, if it's you, Peter replied. Tell me to come to you on the water. I am doing this for you. I want you to know that the things you have been taught are true. We have to play. It's available now. We have to play this, chat. 
We have to play this. The prologue is available now. Holy shit. The full game's Q2, okay. That looked so special. That looked really, really... That was something. The prologue, the three wise men. <laughs> that looked... That was really, really interesting to watch. Jesus is white and speaks modern English. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is, dude, didn't you know? The Invincible. I believe in mankind. In its unlimited possibilities. I believe in man. Some No Man's Sky color schemes. On the top of the evolutionary pyramid. That is why I wholeheartedly having knowledge of our spectacular advancements believe in the success of every interplanetary mission they say per aspera ad astra through hardship to the stars and i add because between the stars spaceship lands walks out for i am jesus christ <laughs> oh he's in space now jesus come on race. Nonsense. I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to fight. Yo, this looks pretty sick, though. All this right, looks good. like a cool mystery. Have it your way. Did everything you could. Whoa. But even that wasn't enough. This is like, uh, what's the Park Ranger game? Firewatch. Yeah, this looks like Firewatch. Space Watch. The stakes are higher than they've ever been. Have we been built to defend the Traveler? Have we been built to defend humanity? The Witness is going to bring all of that to the test. What is that? How would we react if we were facing extinction? And how are we going to stand together to overcome this? You know what must be done. We were created for this moment, to deal with this conflict, to solve for this enemy. What the hell happens when evil finally arrives and confronts the Traveler? This character looks like a, a, a Fortnite character, like the stylization of the eyes. Remind me of like a Fortnite stylization of something. It looks like a Fortnite version of what the real version would look like, you know? The Traveler is threatened. The Witness is here. Callus' forces are here as well. The Pyramid Fleet is here. Big shit is going down. <laughs> Lightfall should feel Wait, like- Wait, hold up. The Pyramid Fleet? Is this that same- Is this the same shit that was teased like 30 years ago <laughs> or whatever? It was like, they teased this pyramid shit for so such a long ass time ago and it's barely happening now? Or has it already happened? Because I'm very, very behind on every, anything Destiny. It happened since Beyond Light. Okay, okay, thank you, John. Has been happening. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Cool, cool, cool. I was about to say, bro, what? Like, they're barely introducing that? <laughs> One of the values that we really wanted to push was... God, like Destiny's so fucking good, right? Like, I don't play it enough, I know. But, God, even, even when I hop in nowadays, it's still just mind-blowing how good the game looks. I think it's like the best looking multiplayer shooter. Into the middle of an active war. One of the values that we really wanted to push was making sure that you felt like the tip of the spear. You were the one who was initiating the action. You were the one who was taking control. You were the one who was attacking things. What this tone gave us the chance to do was to really surface the friendship, the camaraderie, the connections that we have to each other. Kaido, we'll need your troops. If the end of the universe is coming, what do we have left other than each other? Keep the enemy away from the Traveler. At all cost. There's a pretty big, serious threat that is happening to the solar system, so we really wanted to bring that gravity and that weight into the story. Ah, got it! In a major way, what we're doing right now is we're both setting up the finale for the Light and Darkness Saga. We're pulling the witness into the frame for the first time. 
The big question has been, what does it want with the Traveler? What will happen when it finds it? And in Lightfall, it <laughs> Who does said earlier it. so many proper nouns? Dude, that's what got me so into Destiny in, back in the day. And just Bungie's way of building lore and building characters, even, even back with Halo, with like, I don't know, maybe I'm only thinking of Destiny. Like, The Witness, The Traveler, The Darkness, The... The Vex that is always just the proper nouns everywhere. I feel like the witness is so drastically different from any other antagonist that we've had in Destiny in the past. Now a lot of our Destiny antagonists are like kind of the over Covenant, the, top, the Flood, the Forerunners, the Arbiter, Sinecard. And then we have the Witness, who's just so reserved. That it's all about control with the Witness. The Witness is here to finish what the collapse started. Now there's Callus, always been power hungry, in it for himself. He's now signed on as one of the Witness's disciples. We're seeing Callus go through a transformation. Really? And emerge as something new. My semblance matches my cool. inner beauty. Cool. Whoa. Odds are stacked against you. The Witness has arrived. We've got Callus. Everything's under attack. How do we deal with this? And then you find this thread. We knew we wanted to do. And then the Nitro Rifle says, I need a weapon. Or in Destiny. Are we going to do what everyone thinks we're going to do? Are we going to make, like, poison? No, 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 no. We're going to do something that you'd only find in Destiny. We're going to go talk about this thing called Strand, and it's the web of life. What does it mean to have a cosmic web that's connecting everything around you? How do you actually make that, like, an ability? How do you make that, like, a power? A Strand game. It's something that doesn't actually exist. You can't just point to fire, electricity, or ice. Coming up with the idea of the strings, the strands lighting up the world, I think that was when everything kind of started to come together. Strand is unlike any of the powers that we've gotten before. We didn't get it from the Traveler, we didn't get it from the Pyramids. It is a power that we find is unlocked within us as Guardians. When you pull on that thread- Yo, homie, drop the fucking skincare routine, brother. God damn. We didn't get it from the Traveler, we didn't get it from the Pyramids. It is a power that we find is unlocked within us as Guardians. When you pull on that thread and you start manipulating that web, oh, you can do some really powerful things. We have some exciting player class fantasies coming up with Strand that we're introducing. So we have the Hunter Threadrunner, which is going to introduce this threaded spike. The Hunter Super Silk Strike, it's this kind of rope dart. You're constantly, Shame on them, constantly attacking. It feels fluid. It has an amazing style to it. It's just something we've never seen in Destiny before. And then there's the Titan Berserker, and the name is pretty fitting. The Titan Super is Blade Fury, where you weave these giant blades onto your hands. You have a melee attack that you can kind of combo indefinitely. And then you have your heavy attack, which sends out these suspending waves. And then there's the Warlock Broodweaver, the mastermind of the minions that we call the Threadlings. The Warlock Broodweaver super is Needle Storm. You create three sources of power, and then those then get launched out. And then those fly through the air. When they hit an enemy, they'll explode. When they hit the ground, they will then charge up and then turn into Threadlings. Oh, cool! All the classes will have access to a grappling hook. When you select that, that takes up your grenade slot. It was a hard challenge because, like, how can you make this idea of swinging through the world equivalent to a grenade? And so designers came up with this idea of a Bro. grapple melee. The grapple melee is incredibly powerful. Oh my god! I grapple onto an enemy, which stuns them for a second. And then when I get there, I grapple punch, blow them all you up, and start You straight up get the fucking Pathfinder movement. Projectiles are flying all over the place. All that stuff coming together was magic for me. Oh my god, that's destiny? This looks so good. Neo Muna has existed for hundreds of years. It branched off from Earth during our collapse and shut off any communication. So they've been secretly existing on Neptune for a very long time and keeping themselves safe. 
It was amazing to see how the concept artist made all of this beautiful art feel really fresh and new, but also a part of the Destiny universe. When you think about how to design Neo Muna, like what's the architecture like? We're thinking of a lot of aerodynamic things, fins and sailboats. That informs the sort of the architectural form language that kind of looks unlike anything we've ever seen before. The high winds, strong pressure. We have that beach area where we show the sand is made out of diamonds. The whole terrain is following up into the beginning of the city. The color, the graphic design, the vibrancy. Woo! And yeah, there's some mysteries in there. The cool thing about Neomuna is that it's like this big neon soaked city, but it has quite a spectrum mm. of different environments. I think my favorite absolutely is the Thrilladrome. It is an arcade law sector, and I think we can Ooh. relate to spending our days in a sticky arcade <laughs> playing games with our buddies. Oh, I'm cool. Also so excited for people to see the puka pond with all of the pukas that have been like such a mystery since Beyond Light. And then on the other the side puka of the city jet. is Kalos' ship. The Typhon Imperator has landed puka. square in Ahimsa Park. You see that the city is indeed kind of in shambles in parts. There's smoke, there's explosions in the air. And I just go back to the teamwork of everybody getting into a room and thinking like, what can we do to make this feel high octane, very explosive and familiar? I forgot to turn the light off. <laughs> this is a city that needs the Guardian's help and needs their protection. And Callus is gonna do his level best to destroy it. And we're not gonna let them and neither are the Cloud Striders. There's a lot new about Lightfall. We have this new location, and it has these new personalities that come along with it. They're defenders of this city, and they have new perspectives that we really haven't seen in characters in Destiny, and that's taking the form of the Cloud Striders, Nimbus and Rohan. Yo, I understand what's awesome. like there, far better than you. Rohan is the grizzled old veteran who's too old for this shit. They look like they're just engineered to bang. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they have the longest, sweatiest, just bang sessions, you know? And Nimbus is the young rookie. Nimbus is learning on the job. Nimbus was definitely a favorite of ours to animate. They're so boisterous and fun loving and a little smug, but super confident in their abilities. The Cloud Striders, bottom line, are cool. Nimbus! On your stakes. Holy shit. We want the Tormentors to be the most scary unit that you've ever fought in the Destiny universe. Oh, cool. Combatant is very powerful. It means business. It's incredibly intimidating. This thing wields a massive scythe, has command over all this void energy. <laughs> The Tormentor can like grab you, and that's something we've never really done before with a boss. Throws out the scythe, has the player in his hands. And in those moments for Dark Harvest, we actually do things with audio to make it feel even more intimate, where we duck out all the background sound. So you really have this intimate moment with this terrifying creature grabbing you. I'll never experience that, child. I'll never let that happen to me. Lightfall and Season of Defiance are two sides of the Destiny coin. And so on the Lightfall side, God, we this have looks amazing. crazy neon cities going on an adventure far away, sort of bombastic action fantasy. On the Season of Defiance side of the coin, it's a story that's much more closer to home. Season of Defiance is about the ground war on Earth. Callus' forces are invading, and we're defending Earth. We're freeing prisoners. Go now. We're trying to protect the last city, but much more directly and under much more threat than we have seen in a long time. 
you're working with Petra, you're working with Devram, you're working with all these people that you know that are close to home and that are battling for the real thing you're trying to save. We have a lot of weapons and armor for players to earn, and I'm super excited to see what you've been working on. We have a couple of strand exotics. The warlocks are getting what's called swarmers. They're these boots that will, on tangled destruction, create new threadlings at that location. Now they can either shoot it, or they can pick up a tangle and throw a tangle, and then that will also create threadlings. The hunters are getting this helmet that will help them grapple through the air. As you grapple, you gain this new ability called Woven Mail, and it's reducing the incoming damage except for headshots. Oh. The Titans get boots that will augment the aspect that they have. The aspect itself will just send out a wave that will suspend enemies in front of their barricade after casting it, but the boots will split it up into three waves. Whenever they spend an enemy with these boots on, they also gain woven mail. So I'm pushing the front line further and further by being tanky. I have been caught by those boots a couple times in our play test. Gotta get good. We have this Would never let that happen to me. cool heavy metal machine gun that fires according to its own rhythm, where it gets alternate effects every fourth bullet, and then every 16th bullet, it gets even more added to it. <laughs> this is just like the witch fire thing. On the fourth bullet, fucking rips their dick off. Fifth bullet, fucking calls their parents and, you know, says mean shit to her, you know? We have this pistol that will use advanced technology to find your enemies. And so suddenly you're not worrying about aiming, you're really worrying about surviving during the lock on time. And it opens you up to consider your movement more That's cool. than your aiming, being able to lock on to some shit up like cuphead shit in first and person. Just obliterate all of them was, I think, a moment where I kind of went, whoa. <clears throat> You all will finally understand what it's like to be me, just to be aiming and hitting stuff without even really looking or caring, you know? We're introducing a ton of new features that are designed to make sure that the player experiences are as good as they can be. I think one of the things we're most excited about are loadouts and what we're calling build crafting 2.0, which is the system of both, hey, let's make it more understandable to how you make a build. Yes, please. And then let's allow you to save that build. This doesn't look understandable. <laughs> I'm sorry. None of this looks. <laughs> and quickly swap between them. When we started the process of figuring out how we are going to improve build crafting, one of the things that we knew we needed to do was make it easier to go from, I have never done any build crafting to I'm really engaged in this system. When we Jesus, what a head of hair. My team and we said, That's we need a to fucking this thick ass head of they hair. Came back with, what if we did a build management screen and let you see your whole build on one screen? It's all in one place. Chris has you me. Chris it, has my back. It. You can learn. And that coupled with our guardian ranks that's going to come in and basically be our first ever companion to every single player. 1801 light level. Where am I at, chat? Like 15 something? And basically be our first ever companion to every single player. Guardian ranks is our answer to what should I be doing in Destiny if I want to get better? You have this track that tells you what you should be doing. We're really excited for players to start diving into that system along with combinations, a way to finally say thank you to players that you've been playing with. We think all of this stuff is coming together to bring this more cool. cohesive relationship. Chris, you better send me a fucking thank you right now. Thanks, bro. Players. Do we beat Dark Souls 3? Yeah, that's super easy. When we think about the future of Destiny, we think there's so much more to discover. We're just on the coast right now. We want to get into the heart of this continent. We are walking to our 10 year anniversary of Destiny and Destiny being such a core part of our players' lives. We just want to keep building Destiny. We've been talking about this antagonist to the Traveler for so long. In Lightfall, we get to spend time with the Witness in a way that we haven't yet. We're paying off storylines that have been coming together and been building for years. More questions will certainly arise. 
we have this finale with the final shape that's coming right after Lightfall, where we're closing down the Light and Darkness saga. Dude, this grapple shit looks so cool, man. Far from over. This universe is about more than the conflict between the Traveler and the Pyramids, and we want to show you new ways to explore it. We want to show you new things to discover in the universe because we think that destiny has a lot to offer and lightfall is the catalyst for that it's high stakes thrilling action all at the same time pushing the destiny story to places it's never been before that looks pretty awesome that looks pretty freaking great great trailers tonight man